history in there too. And oh, I had some grammatical. Um, in the fourth line with the word "me," I think that the comma should go outside of the quotations. And then also in um, in line twelve, it says the door spins its day howling, and I think um, the day belongs to the door, so it should be an apostrophe. Yes. Yeah, and that's all I got. Okay, hey, thanks, Emily. Others? I really enjoyed the personification in this poem of, with the ornaments and such. It, and it was so funny. Um, and, I, and I especially appreciate the way that the author read the poem out loud because it sounds so much different. Um, very dramatic coming from the author. So I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. Zach? Yeah, I love the um, cynical aspect of working at like a Hallmark store because this poem just does a great job of capturing that feeling. When I go in those stores, I immediately want out of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I love like the, the way that the store comes alive in such a like cynical way. It, it really makes me laugh. And it's done with just the right um, amount that I don't think it's too much. I love the history, like holidays since 1910. Um, the chocolate boxes chattering away. It's cool alliteration. It sounds good. Um, I don't know about suggestions. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's what I got. Yeah, great. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. And maybe it might help. Uh, if where certain switch ups in the uh, story happen, maybe uh, separated into stanzas, that might help kind of get rid of the jumble. I mean, either way it works, but it's just not good. Yeah, good. It's always a good idea, I think, to try them on. You know, it, it, all it takes is a couple of uh, returns, you know, here and there. See what it looks like, see if it feels right. If it feels right, you know, and if not, just. You know, it, it delete a couple of times. Okay, great. Well, um, you know, I too love the tone here uh, of this poem. I think I, I feel the same as Zach. As soon as I go in these places, I immediately want out. <laughs> um, and so the, the, the title, I know I've been picky with a lot of titles um, this quarter so far, but this title I think is just really strong. Welcome to Hallmark. Uh, because, you know, very quickly we understand this is ironic and sarcastic. Um, uh, the, the nagging dust, I think, is, is really strong. Um, and, uh, I, uh, and then I was wondering, too, I'm, I'm guessing that, that 1910 is when Hallmark uh, was created. It, it doesn't really matter either way, but I love that detail. Forcing Christmas as a year-round holiday <laughs> since 1910. That's really good. Silence as a foreign language is great. Um, you know, and as a counterpoint to all these other, um, you know, sort of uh, the, the way people behave here. I, I, I would say too. There, um, possibly even. Maybe as a, as a suggestion, and I'm, I'm straining to come up with um, some constructive comments, but possibly, my guess is this, the poet uh, has, has work, works at this place. And uh, whether that's true or not, I think there may be some even more crazy things that customers do that might get in this store, you know, some that relate to the, the tone of this place, as, you know, other than. Well, I don't need a box, but you can carry it up to the uh, counter for me, you know, so stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, I didn't, I wasn't sure, I want to ask you guys, what did you think about, ma'am, this would, the, the chocolates are chattering, ma'am, this would be a lot easier if you just used your words, the labels are there for a reason. What is that referring to? I wasn't quite sure. I think just customers being confused and annoying, I think, maybe. Or maybe not being clear about what they actually are trying to find. 
Or maybe it's the lady that, that says, well, instead of actually speaking the word. Yeah. The one thing I wasn't sure about in this poem, and that was an example of it, is when it was kind of the speaker, if, they, if there was a speaker, mm -hmm. who was kind of interacting with the store yeah. as the, as like, the first, the person. first person. There is an yes, I. There, right? there is yeah. an I, but I would like for the I to be a little clearer, so I think Comes who's and talking yeah. okay, versus when the customers are talking or when the owner. Because I think all those pieces work, but I would like to know a little clearer what the I is. Okay. Yeah. Really that might just be a matter of, um, uh, you know, getting I in there once or, you know, one or two more times, and then um, maybe, maybe stands of breaks, maybe quotation marks. And then lastly, I would say the ending, um, and maybe if you're lucky, you will stop hearing holiday tunes. I'm kind of already there with the, and I, I think that might be good. I think I want to just end, not on if you're lucky, because you're, you're never going to stop hearing the holiday tunes there. They, it never stops. And that's, in this poem, this never stops. It's relentless. You know, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas since 1910. And so I want to end on like, on turning out the lights, and here are these, you know, I'm dreaming. You know, here I want to hear those tunes going on, and the and the horror deepens, and deepens right, right there. You know. um, okay, great. Any comments or questions for us? Um, when I said chocolate boxes are chattering away, things like that. Uh, there's like an actual like a candy case in there. And like there's labels and people are just like I want that and they'll point and I'm on the other side so I can't see it. Oh. So that's where that came from because I was like I have no way like I can't. So I don't know. That's that. And so the speaker was saying that. Or well, the, the, chocolate or the chocolates were saying, saying that. that. Okay. Yeah, but it was just like a metaphor of my feelings, I guess. And what was the I don't know, maybe that's all. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's pass them in. simultaneously skipping like Hansel and Gretel, longing for a peer-packed paradisical, <coughs> oh, paradisical. Past, paradisical past, like the walks with my foo-foo furry, less fit friend, plop. It was more of a pull than a stroll. Or the childhood cruise in my stroller with my mom, or my dad's piggyback rides, to see the neighboring horses, or the races with my sister, letting all the people disappear in our dust, or the early scenic sunrise with my sweetheart, the missed memories and people make strolling along the once colorful canal a lonesome name. A lonesome life. I stroll down the familiar, dusty, desolate dirt path alone. Dust, dust devils whirl about swirl about, whirling dust in my eye. Water annoyingly splashes my skin as it races down the half pipe. Pollen released by useless weeds make me sneeze. I endlessly enjoy the subject's passing. A couple, a couple linked hand in hand, 
gazing at the sunset in each other's eyes. A woman biking her baby in a buggy behind her. A man with his fit, furry companion training for a triathlon. Two friends gossiping about girl brown. Siblings <coughs> simultaneously skipping on Hansel and Gretel. Longing for a pure back, Gertie's cold past. Like the walk with my foo foo furry, less fit friend, plop. There's more of a pull than a stroll. Or my childhood cruise in, in my stroller with my mom. Or my dad's piggyback rides to see the neighboring horses. Or the races with my sister, letting all the people disappear in our dust. Or the early scenic sunrise with my sweetheart. The mist, memories, and people make strolling along the once colorful canal a lonesome land. Okay. So, I thought that this poem seems to be about the speaker who's walking along a path and she's feeling lonely and bitter <laughs> that she's that she's alone. Um, she's longing for a time when she could take the stroll with someone special. Um, even the path has taken on a different image to her when she walks on it alone. Uh, I thought that there was a bit of telling rather than showing, um, especially in the second stanza. Uh, um, kind of tells about the couple leave hand in hand. Um, and I thought maybe that showing that a little bit better would sound. Uh, I'd like also to see maybe a, a bit more descriptive language in here. Um, I really enjoyed the alliteration. That was a lot of fun. And the internal rhymes in there. Um, I would maybe just reconsider some of the line breaks. Um, like, I like the idea that maybe the poem could start on a three-line stand stanza and then go into two longer ones and then end on a three-line stanza. I think that would be cool. So maybe just putting the second and third and the fourth and fifth together would be would work good. Um, I think that the author definitely gets the point across of how she's feeling. And um, I like some of her, I just really enjoy the alliteration. That's so much fun. Um, and the, um, the, where I would say like more descriptive language would be like in the first um, stanza. I would maybe want to see like the image of what it looks like, not just dirt and desolate, but like, I don't know, maybe describe <coughs> it maybe with no leaves or, you know, <coughs> dead, deadness around or something like that so that it can really open up strong in the poem, but I think it's a really great poem. Okay, great, thank you. Others? Yeah, I like the um, part where the author talks about um, walking with her less fit friend, Plop, uh, when she says it was more of a pole than a stroll. I think if you're out with the dog and on a leash, relate to that. I like that one. Yeah. Sounds good too. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if this was on purpose um, or it was just a computer error, but where this flashes my skin as it races down? I don't know if that was a font thing, but it kind of looks like the image if your eyes are watering or something like that. And that's what it's like, I don't know if you guys can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? I thought it was like a cool effect on there. Also, I see the word dust um, four times on there. And I was wondering maybe the third one, where it says dust in my eye, could be replaced with another word, maybe defining dust. And also, I really liked how it says devils after the first four lines, or well, after three lines, you get that negative vibe, and then you see the word dust. <coughs> Gonna have next. I really, I really like the poo poo edition on I me. Mean, kind of 
kind of reminds me of the movie <coughs> with the little white dog with the I like it. Thank you. Stacy. Um, I like the picture of this poem. I like the idea that, um, and I think that it's conveyed really well, um, the dramatic situation is. I think um, one of the things I notice is that it is written kind of in two parts. There's the description of what is happening when the author is walking down there, the things that, um, or the speaker, I guess, it, that, that they're seeing. And then there's the second half where it is going back into memory. And so it's, these are the things that I'm longing for. And I, I see this little stanza here, longing for a fear pack, fear bicycle to pass. And I feel like if it connected with the rest, I, I feel like it's so separate that I almost missed the fact that this was the transition and that these next things are what um, was being longed for. Um, so I, I wish there was a way to connect that little stanza that's kind of with the rest of the poem, because I feel like it's a natural transition between the two halves of the poem. Um, and then, I don't know, this is, this is a personal like choice that I would make, but it describes the things that are being done for, like the walks with my friend, with my cuckoo fruit, which is my favorite part of the poem, by the way, the, the more cold than a scroll. Um, then it goes into a series of oars. Um, and I just kind of cross those out and I put them in like. So like the walks, like the childhood cruise, like. And I don't know if that personal choice or if that just kind of, I felt like it might have kept it continuing with the thought that was happening and what we really longed for. Um, and then, yes, those are the basic things that I have. Um, Thank you. Um, I really did enjoy this poem, again, with the alliteration and the rhyme. Um, the only thing for me is that, like, sometimes the line breaks, like, I would get confused. Like, the, like the walks of my foo-foo for a less bit, comma, friend, period, plop, comma, it was more of a pull than a stroll. When I first read that, I thought the dog's name was Plop. I didn't realize that that was, that the dog was plopping down. Uh, but I think that if these lines were, continued out by the author, I think that it would be a really great poem because I think there's a lot of elements to this poem that really work for it and I think with just like a little bit of editing that this poem can become a lot stronger than it already is because it already is a very strong poem and I really enjoy reading it but I just, there are just like a few things that I would like to see happen that aren't really nice. <coughs> yeah, good. Yes, yeah. So yeah, I agree with a lot of the other comments about playing with line break and stuff like that, and I like um, pretty much what's happening. I, the, the whole plop line, I've even crossed out some words. I think it sounds good if you go, like the walks with my foo-foo, furry, less fit friend, plop, more pull than stroll. I think it kind of shows that way. Um, I would like perhaps maybe some insight into where all the friends and family have gone. Have they moved away? Have they passed away? Just maybe a clue into why the narrator is alone as a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Kimberly. Um, I really liked some of the ideas in this poem, like the idea of being like alone around a lot of people. But I got a little bit confused because um, it's described as desolate and alone, and yet later there are all these people around. So I would like to see a little bit more contrast, maybe between what's going on now and what was going on in the past, maybe in more negative light, like, or the people are acting robotic, or somehow you're not feeling the connection. I think might be helpful. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, maybe like something like you know, instead of you know, piggyback rides with my father to see the neighboring horses, now dust devils swirl, um, you know, da 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 maybe kind of uh, doing it something like that, and instead of splitting them up, um, uh, trying to show that kind of lonesomeness um, by combining the sections, blending them. Okay, thank you very much, all those were really great comments. Um, the tone really reminds me of um, the, uh, by the way, I think this, I, I could see a conscious effort to 
uh, respond to the prompt here too with like the Hansel and Gretel reference. Um, um, but this reminds me totally to a, a beautiful, uh, well-known poem by William Butler Yeats called The Wild Swans of Cool. Uh, might be something to check out. That just totally is, is kind of evoking the same same thing. It goes back to this uh, this pond where these, sw these swans are. Um, and it's it's after some time has passed. And, and it's just, it's just it really does a good job of evoking that lonesomeness. Um, there are a couple places of telling here that I have marked that I would like to see um, omitted and just some trust in some of these great images. I think I like that suggestion about maybe a, you know, a tree with one, you know, two, two leaves, you know, stubbornly holding on or, or, you know, the dust devils or the, you know, or maybe some, uh, you know, a broken, you know, bottle in the sand, or some, you know, something like that that really could, could do that work. Some of them are already in here. Um, and then lastly, I would say there's a, a, there's something going on with alliteration here. There's a real conscious effort to, uh, to, to use some sound effects and alliteration, which I really appreciate um, because we know the importance of sound in poetry. I think at times it gets distracting. I think in a place like it was more of a pull than a stroll, the sounds are really effective. But in, a, in the passage, longing for a pure, packed, paradisical past, the risk is too much alliteration, and, and it sounds maybe a little like a nursery rhyme or Dr. Seussian or something like that. So I might just generally ease back on that a little bit throughout. And then also, um, uh, I, I may mention that I think these, these one-word lines aren't really working right now, um, and that to, to extend some of those, um, as others have commented. Any, any questions or comments for us? No, you guys pretty much got it. It was just like when I was a child and stuff, we used to, my sisters went off to college and we didn't stand work as much and stuff. So it was like more of a like enjoyable place and then I like walk it now. Yeah. And I see like everyone else enjoying it and I'm just Yeah. 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 I think it really comes through, and I, I was feeling, I, I thought maybe it was about age, and <coughs> being older, um, and, and, it's, and so your relationship with the place is, is uh, changed, and I like how Kimberly put it too, that this is someone who's feeling alone among, you know, lonely, kind of among all these other people, because it's just different. Great. Let's pass it in. Diamond powder that fluffs as I plow through it, almost as cold as the blue icy in my hands. 
Inversion excursion is refreshing to trip to the top of a, top of a cliff, high, high up where, clerk, where clouds swirl and dip. Atmosphere infused lights elude into pyramids. No, words. Movies of paranoia, euphoria, glimpses of far off lands. lands. How could I have let myself breathe inside this space, inverted, blind, desensitized by the brightness that intoxicated my eyes? Warm beds, no, cold. The depth that seems so sparkly at night is just a small town, not very deep and not worth my time. Okay. I really liked the diction in this poem, like uh, inversion, excursion, and infused lights elude into pyramids. Um, the inverted blind desensitize. It's really like jarring there and you sort of want it to be jarring because it's sort of this weird place. It's very alien. And I like that you sort of contrast it with being warm. Or not the author. Sort of contrast it with being warm, like no, I chose this. I want to be here. Um, the third line kind of confused me. The silent sea was good. Um, Looks more and more enticing each heavy foot I fold through. Um, maybe you might want to, uh, maybe the author might want to reword that so it's more clear what's happening. I think stepping through snow and becoming more excited with each step. And there are a few typos, but that's just small things. Um, I like sort of the allusions to clouds and pyramids. Everything's kind of surreal and not necessarily physically concrete. And the end was kind of interesting. Uh, the death that seems so sparkly at night is just a small town, not very deep and not worth my time. It seemed like throughout the whole poem it was worth the author's time. So maybe this is a little bit sarcastic. I'm not sure. Um, that was pretty much the only part that I'm really confused. Um, but anyway, I really like the wording of this poem and just the whole dramatic situation. Thank you. Others? I like how the poem, I think, I don't know, is the word gilded, where it's like gold on the outside and not on the inside. That's yeah. kind of how it makes me think of this. Like, that's so pretty <coughs> to look at, but once you get in there, it's really not that great. And I love how that was used, because I mean, I don't know, that's kind of what you think when you fly over, like on a plane at nighttime and you see all the pretty lights and, I don't know, I just really liked the message of the poem and I thought it had a lot of really beautiful sounds in it. I did get a little bit confused where it said, what it said, warm beds, no cold, and then um, how the lights turned into words. Maybe that's just me not fully understanding what's going on, but it just... Um, make me think a little bit more about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love the line, inversion, excursion. I like that because an inversion is when the clouds are down inside the city. And so, I don't know, that puts a really good picture. So I've seen that before too. It's like where you're up above the clouds, but you're only on a mountain that's not super high. And you just see, like, you're kind of like when, if you've ever been up at Mission Ridge and all the clouds are down in there, like an inversion. And then also excursion is a great rhyme for us going on an excursion, it seems like here. Mm -hmm. but the only problem with that is uh, inverted was used later in the poem, so maybe you use a different word there, because using that twice doesn't kind of quite seem right. No. That's the only advice I have really. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I really love the first line a lot, the clouds swirl and dip rolling down into the mountain room with vanilla drum. I thought that, that was probably like one of the favorite lines that I've read uh, while workshopping any of these poems, because it just was such like a great image. Um, and I agree, I was also a little bit confused with the warm beds now uh, that Cassandra mentioned. But the only thing that I have to recommend, other than what others have already said, is I also really, the first uh, stanza has really powerful imagery all throughout it. Um, and the only thing that took me out a little bit was the, when it says the silent sea, you look, you look so uh, more and more enticing each heavy foot I pull through 
this thick diamond powder that fluffs the cloud through it, just the use of the through twice. Other than that, um, I really like it. Uh, and, and I think like just like a little bit of like those like tiny revisions in there and maybe like tightening up the language a little bit. Um, that's just really great and full of imagery and I love it. Okay. Yeah. So the dramatic situation that I'm picking up on is that the narrator is talking, describing how beautiful things look on Badger Mountain and then juxtaposed maybe maybe processing actually no the warm beds are actually cold. This town is actually maybe small and, and judgmental or something. I guess what I'd like to know is more about Badger Mountain and why the beds are cold and why why the negative turn at the end that I read. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the, the poem. It makes me ask a lot of questions. Uh, I absolutely love the first half. I feel like I love its softness and I love the way that it's describing things almost like you're feeling it as you're going like I'm breathing and grabbing my right at the top. Um, but when it changes, um, atmosphere and beauty infused life's illusion of pyramids, no words. I'm wondering here if it switches, and maybe this is just my thought, because it talks about movies of paranoia, euphoria, glimpses of far, I'm wondering if they were taken from the outside and like they went into town to, to, to the movie theater, maybe, because it's talking about glimpses of far off lands. Um, how could I let myself breathe inside this space that was confined or written by someone else? Um, desensitized by the brightness that intoxicated my eyes, maybe by the movie screen. I mean, maybe that's a little deeper than the author intended, but I'm wondering exactly what's happening in this second stanza here, um, because I feel like it's a little bit unfair. I mean, watching from above, watching the lights in the city, um, because I feel like that's what it returns to at the end. Like, they went down into town, and it was, it was, it looked beautiful from the outside, maybe, but not once they were inside it. I just have a lot of questions about that second um, stanza, and I feel like maybe just a, another line or two might clarify that, yeah. what's happening there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I... Uh, uh, the mount, I've never heard that before. Snow whirling down into the mountain rim vanilla drum. That is highly original, um, and uh, I, I do like this, the muffled slumber as well. So I think there is some real strong imagery and sounds here in the first section. Um, and uh, and then I was just really excited to see this. So I was like reading it, and then like all of a sudden that turn at the end was like, whoa, man, I didn't see that coming. And so I thought that was great. To, to, to see that to see that turn and to see it move from the triggering subject to the generated subject um, it reminds me of a poem by Robert Frost called neither far out nor in deep and he's describing these people at the beach and they're wading in into the shallows and he's talking about literally how they're neither far out nor in deep, but also about, it's sort of a dim view of his fellow people. You know, they're, they're neither far out nor in deep. And, I, and I, I, I sense that in the turn here at the end, looking that there's this gloss, but, but there isn't really the depth that I would like, or something like that. So I think it might be interesting to uh, maybe play with that and flesh that out a little bit more than it is. but. Uh, great to see it. Um, I, there are some line breaks that I've suggested here. I would like line breaks to be reconsidered. And um, and also that second stanza, um, I was a little lost as well. There. Any comments or questions for us? Um, well, this poem is actually, like I use the city as a metaphor for a person. For a person? Oh. Yeah. But that was Interesting. Okay, thank you. Well, we will, tomorrow, we'll, uh, we won't 
We'll just do a keep the room as it is tomorrow, and we'll finish with Lake Chelan, uh, and then and turn to what happened during the ice storm.